we're going to have a look at um, stripping the S200, um, getting it ready to fit a Huma regulator. This is the target version with an adjustable cheek piece. Um, you'll need the S200 tool, um, which normally comes with a new rifle, or you can buy them on eBay or from Julian at um, airarmspares.com. Um, you need to remove the nut using the tool that goes through the stock. There's normally a, a nut and a washer in there, sometimes the washer stays in the stock. Then you need to use a um, flat screwdriver to remove the screw in the side of the stock, or side of the breech block that holds the stock on. There should be a washer in there as well. Then pull the stock off by pulling it down and backwards at the same time at a sort of a 45 degree angle because there's a rod going through the pistol grip. Then we're going to remove the forestock. It should be a two and a half millimeter Allen key. Then if you've got a silencer or a, or a barrel weight or a um, stripper on the end, you might want to remove that now. Then remove the air cylinder by unscrewing it. You can do this when there's air in the rifle, it doesn't make any difference. There is a firing valve built into the uh, brass body, um, which basically contains the air. The fill valve and cap in this is a it's an aftermarket conversion. Um, yours will normally have a black plastic cap on it or a pressure gauge. And once the bolts have been removed, you should be able to slide the um, forestock or When you fit the regulator, you need to make sure that the venturi screw, which is what I'm pointing out, um, is completely out of the way of the transfer port. The easiest way to see if it's out of the way is to remove the barrel. Um, again, this is a two and a half millimeter Allen key. Remove the barrel. This particular one's quite tight. slide the barrel out, then remove the rear barrel fixing grub screw and then you should be able to see down inside the port um, or <coughs> basically through that hole down into the port which is a transfer port um, and then if you get a um, torch or light of some sort and shine it into the um, hole that the cylinder screws onto, you should be able to see the um, transfer port and you should be able to see the um, Venturi screw sticking into the into the um, port which restricts the airflow. With a regulated rifle you want to make sure that this Venturi is not restricting the airflow at all, it needs to be out of the way for best efficiency. So stick a 3mm um, rod or 3mm um, drill bit down into the hole if you can't see whether the venturi is closed or not. Um, if the drill bit goes in and passes the um, the where the uh, venturi screw uh, meets the port then you know that the port's fully open. If not, uh, loosen off the lock nut if it's a Mark 1 or 2 and then use a small allen key to uh, loosen the venturi screw until you can pass the 3mm um, allen key, well not allen key, the 3mm um, drill bit or rod past the uh, venturi. Once you're happy that that can pass through you can then um, lock up the um, lock nut. Alright then we go on to adjusting the actual power. Once you've fitted the regulator you'll um, 
be able to, or well, you'll need to adjust the power. You normally need to turn it down on sub 12 foot pound rifles um, because it'll be very high. Um, on the Mark 1s and Mark 2s, you can um, do this with a, with a large screwdriver because there's a slot in the back. On the Mark 3 uh, S200s, the um, Venturi screw normally has a blanking um, bolt in it which needs to be removed. Um, this can be done by cutting it with a, with a Dremel or a hacksaw and then using a screwdriver to unscrew it or you could drill it and then tap a Torx bit into it um, to uh, then unscrew it. On the Mark III rifles um, there isn't a slot cut in the, um, in the power adjuster so you will need to um, get around this. There is a little grub screw normally which locks the adjuster, which I'm pointing at now. Um, this needs to be loosened. There is also a threaded hole on the other side. There isn't normally a screw in this, but just make sure that they haven't put one in by mistake. Um, basically you want to loosen off the screw, um, which locks the adjuster. Then you can sometimes, or normally, you can use your um, finger. To, you push it down inside onto the hammer and then turn the hammer with the tip of your finger. and um, if all goes well, it should it should turn. Um, if it does, great. Um, if not, there is sometimes a little pip on the end of the um, hammer that you can um, get a pair of pliers or something onto to uh, remove it. Um, another option is to cut a piece of rubber hose like you use in cars and what have you. Um, and then you use that bit of rubber hose to uh, grip the adjuster and you use the, the hose to uh, turn it out or turn it in. Um, it's a good idea to um, cut a slot in the actual uh, adjuster, remove it completely and then cut a slot in it with a Dremel or a, or a saw um, to make future power adjustments a lot easier. I've said it before and I'll say it again, make sure that you make any power adjustments via the hammer spring preload adjuster. Don't make adjustments via the Venturi. While I'm here I'll go over a couple of things that are quite common with the S200. Um, make sure this the um, hammer area is, is free of dirt. The other thing is the um, triggers are um, often not so good out of the box um, but there are tuning guides on the Air Arms Owners Forum and a number of other forums um, that make the trigger quite good um, so it's worth having a play with that when you've got a minute. The other thing is to uh, make sure that the um, arm that um, cocks the hammer back um, moves freely and doesn't have any burrs or obstructions um, stopping it from working properly. Um, basically what happens is when the um, arm is is um, not going all the way back to where it should, the um, hammer um, basically hits the arm before it hits the um, actual firing valve which causes the power to be either low or erratic. Quite often in custom stocks the, um, the uh, arm can get um, squashed in the uh, woodwork um, and basically what that does is um, holds the arm back um, like I'm doing here and you can see the arms held back if you let it go the arm shoots forward so make sure that your stock has um, got enough clearance for the arm to allow it to move